So I met the Pierre Speicher in Einbeck, Germany. They have a fantastic collection of cars and, well, hundreds of cars and motorbikes. And one of the cars is this absolutely awesome and lovely Talbot Matra Rancho. I know the exciting thing is I'm about to drive it today, show you the car in all its details. I will tell you a bit about the history uh, of this fantastic and very unique car. You could say it's the grandfather of all modern SUVs. Okay guys, well amazing. So I'm in the uh, Matra Rancho. Uh, it's a happy place <laughs> uh, to say the least. So, And I'm taking you now for a little ride in the car, I'm telling you something about its uh, really interesting history. And well, then we will see how it looks inside, how it looks outside. Well, there's quite a lot to tell about the car. So let's start uh, the engine, 1.4 out of a Simca 1308. A little bit about the history. It all starts in the 1970s, the oil crisis. Bad years for a company like Matra. So Matra's car division was well, fairly small, um, but was more known for its well, sports cars, just like the Bagheera. And that was pretty hard to sell in the 1970s so Matra needed some good some new ideas and well at the same time such an idea was born in Spain Spanish dealer took a Simca 1100 uh, made his own fiberglass body bolted it on the underpinnings of the Simca 1100 and so the Campero was born a utility vehicle for rough terrain of course two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive uh, but only sold in Spain. I think the bodies uh, were made in uh, Madrid. Anyway, that idea made it over to the Matra headquarters. And in my eyes, Matra is maybe the most flamboyant of the French car manufacturers. As said, was only a small bit of Matra, but they thought, hey, it's a good idea. Maybe also because uh, roughly at the same time, British Leyland had the fantastic idea of the Range Rover, but that was really quite, uh, really quite expensive car with a large V8. So many different ideas came together, and that was the Project 12, the P12. And well, Matra had to cut costs. So luckily, Simca was a division of the well rather chaotic um, roots operation of Chrysler in Europe the time so they took the Simca 1100 pickup uh, and well bolted parts of a glass fiber body uh, on that Simca 1100 well and this is something I will show you now in all uh, its details because I think it ended up with a, a really really cool car absolutely unique for its time and probably the grandfather of all SUVs, if it's now good or if it's now bad. But for the Matra Rancho, it's for the good because it's really amazing. Now here we have the Matra Rancho in all its glory and right in the right terrain here in Lower Saxony, Ironback in the background. Um, so, well, it, it looks like a all-terrain vehicle but what it is, it's an almost all-terrain vehicle, isn't it? So, well, right, the, the, this part, right until the doors here, this is actually all Simca 1100. And behind that, it is all glass fiber, polyester, bolted on the Simca 1100 uh, pickups chassis. 
what else do we have um so the all-terrain look so well you know this is right before the time there were no there were no cross versions no crossover cars well no suvs so this had a massive large plastic bumper with a bull bar and some uh, extra lights then we have these wheel extensions and well you know a wrap around piece of plastic trim which makes it all very well it looks like it can go anywhere where well, it can go almost anywhere right and the same goes for uh, the windscreen we have these bits of pieces we have a small roof rack right there so they even a version with a wheel up on this part and um, this car is uh, on well pretty neat alloys but we will talk about all the different versions uh, the matra rancho was available uh, up next but before we talk well about all the different versions let's take a look under the hood and you know i know nothing about engines uh, well just have a look at this it's a bonnet that opens the french way um, so let's have a look at it it's a, a four cylinder 80 ps uh, 1.4 engine that comes right out of the simca uh, 1308 so why they took all the bits of the simca 1100 uh, pickup they didn't took its small engine they took where well, the slightly uh, larger one so of course it's not a v8 like in the range rover but well it runs it runs pretty good uh, what i like uh, <laughs> about its german brochure is they talk about a very beefy engine that can go anywhere and i don't want to stretch uh, the joke too far it can almost it can go almost uh, anywhere so let's close the bonnet and let's take a look at the different versions and then we'll take a look inside of the car so in germany for example uh, you could buy a very basic version of it i think this could be the very basic version then there was the rancho x a little bit uh, upmarket and well then there was the uh, grand raid and the grand raid was well that was top spec it had everything and there were some neat extras for the car so there was a well there was a proper winch which was situated there that could pull i think 1200 kilograms and it had some extra searchlight on both sides in front of the windscreen uh if you ask me it's maybe one of the most iconic parts of the car and this one is unfortunately missing it well and there was more um, there was even a sort of soft, soft top version of the car so um, it was called the Matra DC Découvrable Decou I'm probably completely wrong with my French and that had some sort of uh, soft top right here where the large window section is and you could uh, drive that car uh, with an open rear part uh, rear roof um, so by the way thanks a lot to my friend christian from fine car brochures on instagram you have definitely to follow him i think he's collecting um, car brochures now for maybe 40 years and that was quite a huge help to get into all the details uh, of the car so thank you christian and while you uh, watching this please uh, follow him on instagram it's really really cool so let's get inside of it right okay let's open the door and hop inside first of all these are very very nice and comfy seat with a well tartan seat covers but inside it is not as flamboyant as it is outside so what do we have we have some well pretty thin doors it is well you know it is completely simca 1100 in here so well we have a typical out of the era steering wheel one spoke one spoke two spoke it's a little bit 
undecided. Um, we have all the dashboard out of the uh, SIM car uh, 1100. So we have, well, we have some buttons. <laughs> so this is for the uh, rear window, for the uh, for the wiper and uh, for the washer. Um, this I actually don't know. This is maybe heated window. And then of course we have the uh, hazard button right here. Um, yeah, well, this is some sort of, well, I think braking light test. I don't know, I can't tell you. So, well, this is, um, front screen eating and these are the extra light in front of the car then we have a choke of course and this is the heater element cold heat red to blue um, max minimum open um, well downside then we have an ashtray of course for your gauloise excuse the usual French cliche I'm using here and I mean it's just a fantastic, it's a fantastic feel inside. It feels very, very roomy. Well, because it is. Um, what else? Speedometer, then we have a little clock right here. Um, temperature and of course fuel, that's it. And let's check out the controls here at the steering wheel. These are very, very, well, very thin. Um, this is for the indicators, light switch, and of course, uh, windscreen wipers. Um, we have a period, Grundig uh, radio, and a little glove box right over here. Whoops! Hmm. Well, there you go. Okay. Let's see what else to explore in this car. So let's check how to get uh, the rear bench. So there's this little thing here, you're pulling it and it's really fairly easy. And there's still some paperwork in the car. Well, and then you're in the Matra Rancho and where it just feels well. An aspect I always uh, loved about the car, these sort of, it's a, it's a skylight, well, I don't know, but these large uh, window, air, um, uh, window area is uh, pretty pretty cool then you have these sliding windows uh, uh, there they slide it's a little bit uh, well not so easy to uh, open it because uh, what it is it's an old car okay now let me show you um, how to fold uh, the whole rear bench uh, it's quite interesting because well, you have to go outside and then it's time to open uh, the rear door. So first of all, you start with the upper part, which opened that way. And then we have um, this handle, which is oh, not easy to operate. Well, and there you have it. So now in order to fold the rear bench there's this little handle right here and then it should I don't know if it uh, worked now or not so it's just fantastic and well, just look at it it's a well you can you can make it almost completely uh, flat in here well there was actually a very interesting extra you could buy a bed for your Matra Rancho. Well, and another benefit of this was, of course, you could really tailgate on this car, enjoying uh, the beautiful landscape. And then you need a screwdriver and a Coke and well, cheers. Now, let me show you some other interesting aspect uh, this car uh, has beside of course uh, a rear wiper yes, the ranch and by the way again it's from the PS Speicher fantastic collection uh, anyway so you open uh, the upper part and then you open the lower part and uh, almost unique to the car and it's a feature I only know from the Citroen days of the time you could 
close the uh, upper part when you could drive with the um, lower part uh, open which is well, not good for the traffic cops because and then there would be no uh, license plate uh, I don't know if you've seen it on the um, Citroen DS estate there's like a flipping uh, license plate function anyway uh, this is lacking exactly that but where you could uh, transport all your long bits in this car without any problems but closing is you have to closing this you have to put um, yeah you have to be careful with it so how does it drive well pretty good pretty unspectacular with the 1.4 um, it's running pretty well I expected it to well to have a more heavier feel but it really doesn't have that so steering is light um, the gearbox there's some well it's a long way <laughs> from two to third if you will um, but it just drives nice so for me it is the feeling well of the room um, it's not dark in here there's lots of light in the car it feels roomy and that's why I like it and by the way it sold pretty well um, Matra expected to sell around uh, 25,000 of these and they ended up with uh, 56,000 uh, of this car when production uh, ended in I think 19 uh, 84 and by the time uh, Matra was already part of Peugeot and one of the reasons production stopped was the project 18 and that was actually the uh, Renault Espace but Peugeot said well we're not convinced about the idea and well pulled out if you will so Renault came in and we all know the Espace turned out to be a massive success for Matra and for Renault. Well, if you look at uh, the market position of the car, it was difficult and easy at the same time. So this car had to compete with the larger station wagons, such as the Ford Granada or the Volvo 240. And the problem was in Germany, for example, the Matra Rancho was pretty expensive. So it cost more than a Ford Granada L in the UK it cost more than a Volvo 240 that was a problem these cars had four doors and maybe more to offer but I don't know if these cars offered more room this car offers a lot of room and even it has only uh, two doors three doors uh, it is pretty comfy even on the rear bench so it had its selling points but like the modern SUV of today this was not sold to um, <laughs> to the people who needed an all-wheel drive vehicle. I remember pretty vividly, I don't know if you know the movie La Boom, a French movie with Sophie Marceau and her father in the movie was a dentist. And guess what he was driving? A Matra Rancher. Of course, we fell all in love with Sophie Marceau at the time. Well, I fell in love with a Matra. Yet, rust protection was absolutely terrible. <laughs> Even the glass fiber rusted. Well, it did not, but well, most of the car had a huge rust problem. So, like many cars of that era, this car just rusted away and only very, very few are still here. And because most of these cars are gone today, I'm more than happy to show you this one today.